Thank you for choosing to watch another free e-learning tutorial from daganane.com. Today we shall continue with our focus on Android apps and KineMaster in particular. This app is probably the best video editing tool in the Android ecosystem and so it should be on everyone's BYOD list. Today we will take you through all the skills you need to know in order to master the features of this essential Android tool and produce your own stunning videos direct from your tablet. So let's get right into it. No sooner had I completed my first KineMaster video tutorial than KineMaster themselves went and updated their app and the entire interface. Therefore, this latest free learning lesson is an updated version of my original KineMaster video editing app. This time, when I open the app, I have four options to look at. The gear icon opens up the default settings for KineMaster. The My Account option is only for those who want to pay for their KineMaster app, which will remove the watermark. The editing options here is of more interest to me, and in here I can set the default photo duration, remove the Ken Burns option for still images, which I personally do not like, so this is an improvement on the old app already. I can also set the default audio recording source, which I shall keep at voice as I use that for voiceovers. Returning to the home screen, there are some help options which you have chosen to use this lesson you do not need and now it's time to press the red button and get creating. And here I'm presented with two options, get started which is a template route for creating content or the skip option. I'm going to choose this option. This is the updated KineMaster interface. Let's take a look around. The screen is split into three with a new toolbar on the left. Along the bottom is the timeline where my eventual video will be created. The top left hand side of the screen is where each media clip will appear and to the right is the control interface. Let's take a closer look at the tools immediately available to us on the control wheel. The top quadrant of the wheel is where I can browse to the media I want to import, meaning video and images. Moving clockwise I can use the next button to browse for audio tracks to add to my movie. The next button is the voice button for me to create voiceover recordings and finally the layer button will eventually allow me to add content on top of my video clips such as images, stickers, titles and pen doodles. Above and to the right of the control wheel is a button that will allow me to get back to the dashboard, another improvement on the old app. In the centre of the wheel is the direct capture option and if I want to capture video directly into KineMaster from my camera. To the left of the screen is a new toolbar. Starting from the top, the theme option allows me to select and even download a myriad of themes to make my movie look a certain way. I'll leave it up to you to browse through these. Below this button is the share option and we will look at this later. Below this are the global project settings option and below this again we can use this tool to just look at the timeline and the layers of my project should I need the space to do so. Finally, the return to start button is a useful tool for me to quickly jump back to the start of my video. I have already captured some footage to use for this tutorial, so to start I am going to press on the media browser option. When I do, KineMaster presents me with all the folders on my tablet that have the appropriate media in it for me to choose from. I am going to look at the contents of my camera folder. Once in the camera folder, I can see all the images and videos taken using the camera app. The icon in the bottom left of each image lets me know whether the content is a still image or a video clip. In the top right of the screen I can select just images or video if I need to filter the content. To select the media I want for my video I simply press on each one and as I do KineMaster adds them to the shelf at the bottom of the page. When I am happy with my selection I press on the large tick to the right of the shelf. KineMaster now jumps back to the timeline view. Now we can start to edit our movie. The first thing you will notice is that the videos have been put onto the timeline in the order that I clicked them. To get more of a storyboard view of the timeline, all I have to do is to use the pinch action and bring my thumb and forefinger together. This allows me to see the entire video as a series of clips. Now I can move the clips into the sequence I want them to be in for my movie. To look at the content of each clip, I simply move the timeline left or right until the clip I want to inspect is under the playhead. To move a clip to a different location on the timeline, I simply press and hold on to the clip. I am going to make this clip my opening clip, so I simply move it to the first position on the timeline and let go. I am now going to repeat this process until I have the clips in the sequence that I want them to be. Once I am happy with my sequence, it is time to actually edit the individual clips. 
And now I can use the stretch action on the timeline with my thumb and my forefinger and zoom into the timeline so that I can edit each clip individually. To start editing a clip, all I have to do is to press on it and it becomes highlighted with a red border and a new menu appears. Let's have a look at what each of the menu options offers to us. Starting at the left of the screen, the toolbar options have changed. The top option allows me to capture still images from my clip and insert them into the timeline. We'll use this option later. Below this is the delete clip option. Note that the clip is only removed from the timeline and the project but is not deleted from my device. Below the trash icon is the clip duplicate icon and below this is the timeline and layer option already discussed. Over to the right the control wheel has been replaced with these menu options starting from the top there is the rotate and mirroring tool which enable, enables me to reflect my clip on the vertical or horizontal axis or using the rotate tools I can turn a portrait oriented movie into a landscape playable clip. Moving down, the trimming tool identified by the scissors is where I expect I'll be spending most of my editing time. And below this is the clip effect tool and it has several tools for titles and overlays. Next, the video cropping tool is only available as a premium service and is locked on the free version. The volume tool allows me to set the volume levels for the clip and for the background music. And below this tool is the speed tool and that allows me to control the speed up or slow down a clip. And next comes the three circles. This is the color tint tool and this is probably a tool I would use sparingly but for some this is probably an essential tool. The color adjustment tool allows me to change the brightness, the contrast and the saturation of each clip. The final tool is the volume envelope tool and this allows me to reduce or amplify parts of the audio track of any given clip. Those are the tool sets I have to play with so now let's get editing. I think it is essential to state at this point that workflow is entirely personal. What works for you is just fine. Once I have sorted out my clip sequence I like to edit the clips using the scissor tool and so this is where I'm going to begin. To edit a clip First I ensure that it is selected and then I press on the scissor tool. The video clip is now highlighted in yellow. The large yellow handles at each end of the clip allow me to slide them from left to right to trim either the start or the end of the track. To make this more accurate I simply zoom into the clip using the stretch gesture. At the start of this clip my preferred start point is at the bottom of the windscreen so I want to move the first bit by using this method. Sometimes I like to split a clip and this is a particularly useful trick for titles which we'll get onto in a moment. To split a track I simply place the playhead at the exact point on the timeline where I want the track to be divided into two sections. I then press the split at playhead option to the right. Note how when I do this there is no clip transition inserted between the clips. The effect here is that my viewers will not see the split. The two clips will play seamlessly as one allowing me to add a title into one of the split clips. Looking at the other options here, the trim features will delete the portion of the clip to the left or to the right of the playhead, depending on which I choose. However, for this movie I want to grab a particular frame and use that for the starting title sequence. So I will open the screenshot tool from the menu on the left. I want to use the third option here and create a new static image that will be inserted into the timeline to the right of the current clip. Now that has been done, I can move the image to the start of the timeline and now can edit it. By default, as I said earlier, a still image will play for 6 seconds. I can change the length I want the still image to play in the settings panel. And now that I have my starting still image, I will add a title to this clip. To start this process, I press on the clip effect tool. For this clip, I'm going to use the basic title effects option in the top section of the title tool. I'm going to choose the center option. As I do this, the entire clip in the timeline is highlighted yellow and I can use the large handles once again to edit how my text will appear in the clip. Pressing center again, a new option appears. First I will press on the radio button to select my text color. I can either select from the grid or use the color picker. When I'm happy with the color, I press on the tick. To add text, I press on the text box. The keyboard appears and I can add the title. I can change the font of my title by clicking on the A. By default, the droid fonts are used, but if I click on the Latin option to the left, I have access to many, many more fonts. To use any font, all I have to do is to click on the download button to the right, and that font will be used in my title. 
To get back to the keyboard, I press the return button and then to set the title text, I press the OK button. My title is now complete and to return to the other video editing options, I have to press on the tick in the top right of the screen. To preview my movie at any time, all I have to do is to click on the play icon in the preview screen. Now that I have edited my clip, I can look at some of the other tools available to me. Let's have a look at the colour filter. By pressing on the three circles, it is possible for me to colourise my clips. Colourising is a good way of setting a mood for a movie. Think of the slightly green hue of the Matrix movies, etc. Used well, Colourise can have a very positive impact on a movie. To add colour, just click on one of the colour buttons to the right. To return a clip back to how it was, use the top left hand filter. Perhaps a more useful tool for most users is the colour adjustment tool. Using this tool, it is possible to alter the exposure using the brightness and contrast tools to give the clip the boost it needs. And the saturation slider saturates or desaturates the colours of an entire clip. Using these tools can give real depth, warmth and vibrancy to my clips. And finally for this section, the play speed tool needs no introduction, but can reproduce some really great visual effects if combined with split clips. Remember how I said a split clip plays seamlessly? If I had some clips of fast moving action, I could split the clip and slow down one of the clips to overemphasize the action. Now that I've gone through the visual tools, it is now time to look at the audio tools and options available to me to further enhance my movie. With the video clip still selected, I press again on the scissor tool. The second to bottom option on the right allows me to extract the audio of the clip. Pressing on the extracted audio clip highlights the track and reveals more audio tools for me to use. The yellow handles allow me to trim the start or the end of the audio, just like the video tool does. Starting with the volume control, I can make global changes to the volume of the track. I can trim and split the audio track, just like the video track. But perhaps the most useful tool is the audio envelope tool. This tool allows me to add keyframes to the audio track. To add a keyframe, all I have to do is to move the clip backwards and forwards until the section of the audio track that I want to amplify is under the playhead. I then press the add button. To add more keyframes, I repeat the same process. Now that I've added the keyframes, all I have to do to amplify the audio is to move the track so that the keyframe is under the playhead and then use this slider to the right to increase or decrease the volume again. Again, I can repeat this for each keyframe and using this technique is a good way to try to reduce excessive background sounds if a track has them. The audio on my video clips does not have any commentary. Therefore, I want to add a voiceover track. To do this, I need to ensure that no clips are selected so that the navigation wheel returns. Now I can click on the voice button. When I'm ready to speak, I just press the start button. The recording starts immediately and as KineMaster records my voice, it also plays the clip in the viewer and creates a red overlay on the timeline to illustrate how much time I have left in the clip. To stop recording, I press the stop button. The track is inserted into the timeline and an expanded audio menu appears with two new options, review or re-record. Doing nothing leaves the voiceover track where it is. However, just like the image clips, I can move it along the timeline by pressing and holding and sliding. The final audio element I want to add is my own music track. To add audio, I need to ensure that there is nothing selected and the navigation wheel reappears. Now I press on the Add Audio option on the wheel, and KineMaster opens all the locations where audio tracks have been stored on my tablet, and all I need to do now is to select the appropriate track. When I press on a track, two options appear, the Play button and the Plus button. I always preview the track prior to inserting it, so I press on the Play button, and once I'm sure this is the music I want, I then press the Add button and KineMaster inserts the audio into the timeline for me. Once back in the timeline, note how KineMaster identifies different audio sources with icons and different colours. So far we have not looked at the final quadrant of the control wheel, the layer option. I particularly like the image option as this allows me to add picture in picture images to my creations. To add an image, I press on the image option from the pop out menu and browse to the image I want and press on it. 
The image is then entered onto the top of the video clip. Using the scale tool, I can resize the image and move it to an appropriate place in the screen. The menu on the right allows me to adjust the properties of this image and also to control the entrance and exit animations, which is all very cool. Again, whilst the clip is highlighted in the timeline, I can use the yellow handles to set the duration each image will play for on the timeline. The other options such as sticker and pen are perhaps a tad gimmicky for me, but I am sure that you, they will find their use over time. Again, if those items are added to the timeline, the same editing options become available. The text tool differs from the title tool in name only. It is possible to animate, edit, create background colour for the text option here. The one major difference is that the text can be placed anywhere on the screen. Now that I have added audio to my video creation, there is only one more thing to add to my video before I render it for sharing. Between each clip that has not been split, KineMaster automatically inserts the default transition. To edit these, I just have to press on a transition icon and a new menu appears. I can now browse the transitions and select the transition I want. Once I press on it, that choice will be inserted between the clips. Just a note here, please be consistent in your choice of transition. The gear wheel to the right of each transition option, when pressed, reveals a slider with numbers on it. This is the length of time each transition will play for. To adjust the duration, I just slide from left to right until the desired time in seconds is between the two arrows. When I'm happy, I press the tick again. And that's it. My video has been edited and it is ready for sharing. To start the sharing process, I press on the exit button above and to the right of the control wheel. And I'm now returned to the dashboard where my project is still called Untitled. To name my project, all I have to do is to tap on it and then tap on the name, Untitled, and the keyboard appears. I can now name my project and when done, I click on Rename to save the changes. To export my creation out of KineMaster, I have to press on the Share or Export button. I want to save it to the video gallery. The next screen gives me a choice about the watermark. As I do not want to subscribe, I have to put up the watermark and have to press on the free option. When the new menu appears, I have the option to choose the quality of the final exported file. I always use high definition and then press on the export button. Depending on the size of the video, the rendering process can take some time and it's really important that the app is not closed during this process, otherwise you'll have to start all over again. KineMaster also provides quick links to the share options available to me. To share via one of these links, all I have to do is to simply press on the appropriate icon. I have clicked on the YouTube icon. I have an account, I'm already logged in, and so I just need to create a title and write a description for my YouTube video. But I can also select the appropriate category and even add tags, all from within the app. Once I'm happy with the information, I simply press on the upload button in the bottom right of the screen and my video is on its way to YouTube. As you can see, KineMaster is a fully featured video editing tool and as such, it should be on every single BYOD list. It really is a great tool, even with the watermark. Thanks for watching this free tutorial. Your support is important to us and we value your feedback. So please leave a comment below and also don't forget to like us. We aim to produce one tutorial per week, so why not subscribe? You won't regret it. So until our next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing.